Okay, let's do this thing. All right, you're on a roll now, right? Yes, a bread roll. Steven Sanchez, so good to see you. Good to see me too. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Are you looking at the little box in the corner, right? Where you're doing the Zoom meeting? Yeah, hey. I, I'm like, I'm like I'm just staring at myself talking like, oh God. <laughs> Would it make it easier if I put my hoodie up too? We could do it together. Oh yeah, this is cool. We look like we're in like a... <laughs> Are you in Toronto right now? Yeah. Because you were just in Montreal yesterday. You've got your uh, first string of Canadian shows. And yes. tonight you're going to be at the Opera House, which is exciting. You're going to have an amazing crowd. So cool. I'm so excited. I mean, traveling's got to be pretty hard on you. Are you relatively new to the whole traveling? Yeah. I mean, it's been, honestly, it's been worse when the bus stops. Because it's like a white noise kind of thing. And it's like moving. And like you're moving and then when it stops, you're just like, you wake up and you're like, oh, it stopped moving. Like, oh God. And it's like 4 a.m. or something like that. It's never had a good time. You're always in the middle of the night where you get to where you need to go. It's cool. You know, it's it's been great. And like, I've honestly been enjoying it a lot. Um, yeah, I've been enjoying it so much, actually. It's been really great. Did you spend any time whatsoever in Nashville? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I live there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Nashville, of course, is, you know, Music City, USA. And so you're always surrounded by like the just the best talent. So when you were uh, just starting to kind of, you know, get your feet wet with music, uh, did you find that it was really easy to do just given that your surroundings and basically just geographically? Yeah. I mean, I definitely like I moved there just to kind of have like a hub just to kind of just hang and like be around good people and like financially be able to afford where I was. Living. It was less about like, you know, moving there for the sake of writing with people that are there. It was just more like, oh, this is a great place because there are good people here and like I'm just going to live here kind of thing. But yeah, it's been nice. You are a young artist and your sound. One of the things I love about being in radio is music like yours comes across to me and I'm like, okay, this stands out because it's so different than anything that's being played right now. So tell us a little bit about your sound and maybe the inspiration that uh, you drew from. You've got to have been listening to some old records somewhere. Yeah, I uh, I mean, I grew up with that, you know, and I, uh, I used to see my grandparents like, a couple times out of the year and when I would go up and see them when I was growing up uh I'd wake up in the morning and they'd make me breakfast and then they'd send me out into the barn that was on their property and I would literally look through vinyl like all day and pick records out and it was anything from Nat King Cole to Frank Sinatra to Jimmy Durant like the ink spots the platters you know and and yeah and like it was so cool with that because like I didn't have access to like music so directly through Apple Music or Spotify, you know, because I was so young. And so I would go home and literally listen to them for the first time, those songs on like the hard copy, you know. And uh, and so I just, yeah, I grew up with that. And so it felt very intrinsic, you know. I mean, when I wrote Until I Found You, you know, it was, I was in love with the girl. And like, it is extremely easy to write about somebody you love because it just falls out of you, you know. And it doesn't have to be something you look for or anything. And I think it just kind of naturally fell into that 50s sound because I bought a guitar, you know, that day when I wrote the song and like it was this old looking Rickenbacker and this old amp and like, yeah, it just kind of fell into place like that. And you wrote Until I Found You in like a matter of minutes? Yeah, I wrote that song in like 10 minutes. It was like so quick. Does this girl know that she was the inspiration behind the song that is absolutely blown up and gone huge? Yes, her name is the first lyric in the song. So, <laughs> got a couple of uh, a couple of songs with uh, women's names, and are those about actual people too, or is that just coincidence? Uh, Evangeline is about nobody. It's just about the the concept of that kind of love. Like with this new record, we're kind of setting it up in the years 1958, 1964. And uh, Until I Found You sits in 1958, which is this world where love is very sweet and sultry and, and you know, very romantic and loving and all that. And uh, 1964 is this very seductive, alluring, you know, mm -hmm. 
kind of sink into the floor kind of love. Evangeline just kind of sits as a placeholder for that. And but Kayla, you know, for instance, is about somebody I had a crush on when I was like 15, you know, and I wrote the song when I was 15. And, you know, I just wanted to I was trying to use like my ability to write songs for that reason. And that was just dumb. It's not dumb though. It's all, it's all stepping stones. And you know, what's really cool is we're all going to get to follow along with all of the things that happen in your life in the future. And we're going to get to see where your music uh, transforms from there. And that's really rad. I think that's amazing. You really did uh, strike it big on TikTok. It was Lady by the Sea that went? That was the one. It's so funny. That song, our MD and guitar player, he orchestrated this whole version of that song that we played during the set, and it's my favorite to play. Weirdly enough, and that song is so old now. Old, sort of. It's two years old, but still. Do you wake up in the morning and you're like, okay, this is what I'm doing now? How amazing is that? Yeah, it's really weird. Like, I keep, I mean, all of us are just like, we're literally in Toronto for our job. Yeah. That's so cool getting to do what you love that's uh that's just part of it right yeah like i mean i bought a house in october and i'm just like like my like i have a job that like enabled me to buy a house and like that's so cool like and i just it's neat because like my grandparents were like oh is this gonna work out and stuff and now like they've like been to that house and they're like okay i guess it's working out Grandma and Grandpa deserve a little uh, something for being so supportive. Just saying there, Stephen. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations on all your success. We've been seeing you uh, being on uh, The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, and just things are really coming together for you, and uh, we're super stoked. So, you know, all the best with your show tonight. It's going to be good. Your Toronto fans love you, and uh, thanks for taking the time today. Good time.